Scientists have grabbed the funding to resurrect the woolly mammoth, and they think it could save the world from climate change. Here's what you need to know. Geneticists led by Harvard Medical School's George Church are seeking to bring the woolly mammoth back to life 4,000 years after its extinction, and have secured $15 million of investment, according to CNN. Supporters of the idea believe their return to the Arctic could help recreate a grazing ecosystem, trampling down and compacting snow, which makes it less likely to melt and release methane and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, according to the BBC. Supporters also speculate that because mammoths are like walking bulldozers, they could be used to level forests and shrublands that have sprung up in the Arctic, which would mean sunlight reflecting snow remains in those areas longer. The Guardian explains that in order to recreate the woolly mammoth, scientists will add genes from frozen mammoth specimens to skin cells of Asian elephants. An egg is then created in the lab, and its nucleus is switched out for the skin cell that is mixed with the mammoth DNA. One of the project's backers said its goal is to have the first calves in the next four to six years. However, CNN spoke to two mammoth specialists who both expressed doubts about any impact the reintroduction of the mammoths could have on the climate. I still wonder what the bigger point would be. First of all, you're not going to get a mammoth. It's a hairy elephant with some fat deposits, said Love Dallin, professor of evolutionary genetics at the Center for Paleogenetics in Stockholm, before adding, there's absolutely nothing that says that putting mammoths out there will have any effect on climate change whatsoever. Whether it can be done or not, and whether it is effective at doing anything other than creating zombie mammoths that are cool to look at, the project faces similar questions to other genetic research projects that seek to play God. Earlier this year, a team of U.S. and Chinese scientists successfully implanted human cells into monkey embryos, according to a study published in the journal Cell on April 15th. As with the mammoth proposal, the process began with the reprogramming of mature skin or blood cells into a stem cell-like state. 25 of these reprogrammed human cells were then added to macaque monkey embryos to form what is known as a chimera, or mixed species embryo, according to Science Alert. But despite research co-author Jun Ru saying that human cells made up only around 4% of the chimera embryos, in that project, all of the hybrid embryos that survived for the full length of the experiment were destroyed for ethical reasons. What's more, the researchers note they consulted with bioethicists and thus grew the embryos in a lab rather than a surrogate. Scientists creating woolly mammoths will have to answer questions over whether it is ethical to mix genes from dead species with existing species, whether it is safe, and whether there could be unintended consequences. These questions may well intensify and multiply out as the power of genetic technology increases, and who knows where the answer will lead us. Take, for instance, a relatively innocuous scientific study from 2020. Scientists discovered an amazing trove of fossilized footprints in New Mexico, which helped tell the harrowing story of a woman and a two-year-old child's dangerous journey from 13,000 years ago, according to a study published in Quaternary Science Reviews. The footprints show that the woman was carrying the child most of the way, and that she was walking very fast and very straight in muddy sludge. She later returned the same way, this time without the child. After studying the 1.5 kilometer long track of fossils, researchers concluded that the woman must have been walking very fast because of the many dangerous animals that frequented the area, including saber-toothed cats, dire wolves, and mammoths. A remarkable separate set of footprints show that a group of mammoths and a giant sloth stepped into her tracks in the period between her first and second trip. Amazingly, she then stepped into the tracks of these extinct animals on her way back. The mammoths appeared to have been oblivious to her track, as they just strode over it. But the giant sloth's reactions amazed scientists. The study says the sloth stopped over the human's track and then reared on its hind legs. As the animal approached the trackway, it appears to have reared up on its hind legs to catch the scent, pausing by turning and trampling the human tracks before dropping on all fours and making off. In other words, it was aware of the danger. That's an interesting kind of beautiful story, right? But what if we get to the point where instead of just animating it, we could actually bring back all of the people and animals involved and interview them? What if it ruins everything completely? What if the mammoths were racist against saber-toothed cats? And what if these hypothetical interviews are really dry because none of these animals can talk? It completely ruins the magic of the past. Okay, maybe that isn't the best example of the ethical dilemmas in play here, but it's at least one theoretical problem with being able to play God, right? According to the Siberian Times, a group of scientists from Russia and South Korea want to clone an extinct horse species by extracting DNA from the frozen remains of a foal that died 42,170 years ago in Siberia. 
The fool's body was found in the permafrost of a Siberian crater called Batagaika in Yakutia, Russia. It was found to be part of the Lenskaya breed, which went extinct about 4,000 years ago. The team has attempted to extract cells from the foal to create a cloned embryo. The extracted cells are first cultivated in a growth medium, a substance that encourages the growth of microorganisms. They are then placed in a carbon dioxide incubator. If successful, the embryo would be implanted in a South Korean horse. Scientists are also considering using a yakut horse, an Eastern Siberian breed, as a surrogate mother. Researchers digging in a 9,000-year-old burial site in Peru found stone projectile points near a woman's skeleton and concluded that women hunted animals 9,000 years ago. According to a research article by California-based researchers, the find indicates that modern arguments around gender roles should be updated. Among the projectile points, the diggers also found stone tools associated with carcass processing, a task that has traditionally been associated with female roles in ancient societies. We believe that these findings are particularly timely in light of contemporary conversations surrounding gendered labor practices and inequality, said paper author and anthropologist Randy Haas of the University of California, Davis. It is assumed that if the woman was indeed a hunter, she must have had the muscular build and the mental attitude required to drive sharpened pieces of stone through large animals and then cut their throats with a sharpened stone. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.